So it's time to really start busting on my flea wood, uh, mainly because the blue Cadillac's gone and I don't have a daily driver. And me and my wife work two different schedules, so we can't carpool together. So I'm gonna have to get my car done. Uh, I am looking for some stuff. I got my eyes on a few things, but typical Facebook marketplace, you don't get any kind of reactions, or if you get an answer, it's usually one word, and it's not the word you're looking for. So, kind of taking my time, looking for something that I want. I got a few things in mind, like I said. Uh, some of the stuff's not even on Facebook marketplace, just some cars that I know about, that I've seen for years sitting. I know, wonderful idea for a daily driver. But, it is what it is. Uh, we'll get through it. But I'm gonna start working on the rear end. Uh, I gotta cut these spring perches off. This car used to have coil under. When I built it for my buddy, his daughter was really young. I think she was like two or three. So I was trying to get the best ride out of the car that I could. Uh, didn't really know about accumulators. I heard about them, but I never really knew where to get them back then. So that really wasn't an option. So we decided to do coil under. I've always heard that it was a smoother ride. I've never done it before. Uh, we used two-ton pre-cuts and did coil under, and it was a wonderful ride. This is a really, really good riding car. So if you're considering a smooth ride, you're curious about coil under, I never had a problem with it. Um, it rode really good. Well, I can't say I never had a problem with it. I had a small problem when we first started. Uh, he liked the three-wheel car, which most people do. And we have factory, let me say factory, but we have just basic coil over cups. Uh, they're about an inch deep. And he had a problem with them popping out on the top of the coil when he three wheel. So I basically got the same material. I say three inch pipe. Got a three inch pipe, three and a half inch OD, three inch ID. <clears throat> but I just welded that onto the cup, basically to make a deep cup. And we never had a problem with it after that. Uh, never lost another spring. Never had a coil or a cup pop out. And like I said, the car rode really good. Uh, I am putting accumulators on it now, so and I got a higher lockup, and I'm going to be three wheeling it. So I'm going to do coil over, uh, you know, just make sure everything stays in there. Uh, you could probably do coil under. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. I mean, like I said, I'm going to just do coil over on mine. That way, I know everything's in there safe. Plan on hopping the car too. So I want everything all contained on the car. So I'm going to start cutting these off kind of laying out my reinforcements, start tacking stuff together. I got to see if I need to uh, basically shim my power balls any certain way or not. I'm not sure on that. Uh, I want to be, I want to be sure that uh, my power balls have full range travel back and forth, you know, all the way down, all the way up, three wheeling. Make sure that this, uh, make sure that the cylinder isn't going to get in a bind at all. So I'm going to tack everything up. Throw it back in the car. I've had this actually in this car like 20 times. But I'd rather do it a bunch of times and know everything is the way I want it to be instead of just throwing it all together, getting in the car, but like, ooh, that wasn't supposed to be like that. So I'm gonna start cutting on this. Uh, I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. I mean, you guys have seen me cut a rear end apart. Uh, nothing really interesting there, just cutting a bunch of stuff off. But I'm gonna get it cleaned up and we'll go from there. So I got my axle somewhat cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and weld the tubes to the differential. Uh, what I like to do, I usually use a wire wheel on a grinder and get all the gunk and junk off. And then I go back in with a cutting wheel, which I know sounds scary to most people. Don't use a cutting wheel like a grinder. Um, a lot of people think of it using it like that. That's a bad idea. I think it will explode. Basically what I do is I just use it as a cutting wheel. I pretty much put it like that. And I go around. I do the same thing there, go up and down. That way I can get really close into that corner because it's kind of hard to do with a grinding rock as far as getting all the way in there. And it never fails if you do it with a grinding rock, you'll leave some dirt in there and then it'll contaminate your weld and booger it up and have porosity and all that good stuff. So it's best to try and get in there as far as you can and get it as clean as you can. That way it makes a good weld. So I'm going to burn this in, do the other side and keep moving forward. And even after that, still sometimes you have problems. That one turned out all right. I had a little bit of spitting and spattering. This side was the same. I started out, it wasn't going too good. Made some adjustments on my machine, it did better. 
but with that cast metal it'll soak up it's very porous and it'll soak up any kind of oils and such now if i had my torch gauges i would have probably preheated it kind of burned off whatever's in there but i've had better i've had worse i'll take in the middle so i got a little bit more work done on the axle got all the perches cut off all the brake lines and got my tubing set up there got it tacked in place tried covering as much surface area as i possibly could And I'm going to fully box this rear end in. That's why I did the channel all the way down. Because I'm basically going to run a plate from there down on each side. And I'm actually, uh, I was watching a video by Lolo's and more. Uh, he does a bunch of cool low rider stuff as well. Teaches a lot of people some cool tricks. Taught me a cool trick. Uh, he ran channel on the bottom. Just the same as the top, except flipped it upside down. Run on the, um, He might have flipped it upside down. He may not have. But I'm going to flip mine upside down. Because that's going to be the bottom of my box. I'm going to take my channel just like that, flip it upside down. Actually, I got a piece I'll show you right now. Run it something like that. It's kind of hard to hold it and film at the same time. But that way, I can run a straight piece of plate on the back side and the front side. And it'll keep everything really square. I've already clamped on a piece of angle, just run it straight down. And it touches the tubing just right on each side. You know, not too big of a gap, not too little of a gap. So I'm pretty happy with that. And as I was getting ready to tack up that brace, I was kind of looking at the lower control arm mount. And I figured I might as well beef that up a little bit as well. I've seen some guys reinforce it. Most people don't. But I've seen it, you know, not a bad idea to reinforce it. So I made me a template. Kind of started looking at it. It's got a lot of bends. Which deterred me for a few seconds. And then I just decided to suck it up. Bend a piece of metal a bunch of different ways. Probably gonna grind some of that out of there too. That's some good old factory welds. Bend it up a bunch of different ways. Got to fit pretty good where I was happy with it. And then I'm gonna weld it in. Pretty much just slap me a piece of cardboard up there. Boom, had a template. And then boom, had it cut, bent, all ready to go. That easy. So I went ahead and did the other side too. I welded it in first. Had a little bit of trouble right down here closing that gap up so I decided to use my little core out of my bushings that way I could pull it in but not close my gap here because that is crucial I'm going to keep that I'm going to put my bushings in there and it'll be good I did leave this one I thought about reinforcing it but I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine I mean, you got a solid piece going through here your brace is going to be coming off of this you know as you already see that's already thickened so I think that'll be a-okay. Uh, may plate here. I'm going to see how my reinforcement plate looks. It should, well, it'll go right there. So it should be fine. I may add a plate there too. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, come out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Like I said, still got a gap for my bushing. So I can get my control arm in there. I won't have to fight it. And it's reinforced all the way, front to back. I did cut off my shock mount. That's kind of what made me really think about reinforcing that because when you take off the shock mount you know it's ugly but it is a lot of strength because it's bringing structure that way so that was kind of the main decipher of why i wanted to go ahead and reinforce it yes granted your uh your reinforcement plate you know comes about right here that's reinforcement also but you got all this hanging out below and i just felt a lot better adding an extra piece of plate to that so i got my channel fitted up on the bottom wasn't too bad. Won't stay in focus. Yeah, just made some little notches there in the center. Just coked it out a little bit. Made my... Wow, this thing won't stay in focus. Uh, made my bevels on the side. Got them fit up pretty good. Got that all welded in. And started working on the back. Got my plates cut for it. Got them all tacked in. So now that I got the basic frame laid out tacked up uh, I got my template up here I just cut me a straight piece across on my cardboard I'm gonna line that up with the edge of the steel it'll save me a lot of cutting and it'll leave it straight so now I'm kind of just going from the back side and making my mark along my angle down there on the bottom or my channel I should say and then I cut it up and hopefully it'll fit good if not we'll keep on trimming 
And another thing I like about using the channel is if you don't make your cut perfectly fine on your reinforcement plate, you got the channel to act as a guide. As you can see there, mine wasn't just right here. My template fit pretty good, but something got messed up from there to the metal. So that was hanging over a little bit. So I just used my grinder with a flat wheel, smoothed it down to where my channel's at. I'm going to buff all the welds smooth anyways, so there's going to be some grind marks on it. But it gives you a level playing field to work with. So that's kind of nice. Got the plate on the back all fitted up. I made it as one piece, but I uh, ended up cutting it in the middle just to make it fit a little bit better. It fit all right, but I wanted it to fit really good. It was a little bit off on the top driver's side, and I knew if I made that cut, I could bring the driver's side down, make it fit a lot better, make it a lot more even on the top. So that's what I did. I'd rather have just a little seam that I can buff out than have the whole top be crooked. So I'm about to start burning this thing in. And uh, I'm going to kind of jump around and put too much heat into it. i got some other welding projects that I can be doing. So I'm going to kind of weld on this a little bit, weld on some other stuff, come back, you know, jump back and forth. As you can see, i got two different power balls. Haven't got around to cutting those off yet. i got to cut that one off. And actually, i got to cut this one off and buff it up. It was just put on there to make sure that it clear what I was trying to do, which it did. So i got to pop that off, clean it up. I'm going to make some marks where it's at. That's why I was wanting to put this plate on first so I can lay out where my power ball is so I don't have to kind of go through that again. And then I'll cut that one off, pop a new one on, and we'll move forward. And also one thing I forgot to add, uh, as I said earlier, I flattened that down with a buffer wheel. But I also want to put a groove in there so my weld has somewhere to penetrate. So I just got an uh, actual grinding rock, stuck it outside, run it down. And got a little bevel in there, so that way when we polish off the weld, you're not taking the whole weld off. You still have some down below where it penetrated. So keep that in mind. I mean, you always want to bevel your edges for the best weld you can get. But in case you get in a circumstance like that, there is a way to fix it without taking everything back apart. Got the whole back welded up. Now we'll move on to the front. Take your time when you're making your patterns. And it'll pay off when you go to put your metal down. You just have to do some adjustments, but... It'll save you a lot of work in the long run. Not to mention cardboard's a lot cheaper than metal, especially nowadays. So I'm about to start tacking this in, and I'm gonna start fitting the other side, and I'm gonna be burning this side in while I'm fitting that side. That way I can let this side cool down, you know, kind of weld about yay big, weld that, work over there, let it cool down, you know, hop back and forth. Just kind of keep the heat down. You don't want nothing to warp up, I and mean, it's pretty damn braced, but you'd be amazed what he can do. So here's the rear end all done. Uh, it's in the car. Well, I wouldn't say all done. The metal work is done. Uh, the fab work is done. Still got to paint it or chrome it. Not 100% sure on what side I'm going to do. Probably paint it because I'm broke. Uh, but yeah, still working on it uh had to get it done had another project come up the impala which you guys had already seen that so kind of late on this video but better late than never um i'm probably going to do a little bit more i'd actually lost a lot of info on this video um a lot of footage you know, I, I took my time and made some good stuff but it, it went somewhere and i have no clue where it's at so i'm gonna probably do another video i got the rear end of the blue rose i'll probably wrap it might sell it, might hold on to it, might shorten it. I haven't decided yet. Um, that's for another day, another video. Yeah, so I'm about to pull the Fleetwood back in the shop uh, to work on because I plan on going to uh, Orlando in October, and October is coming up very, very quick, uh, a lot faster than what I would like it to, unfortunately. And if you may notice, I don't really have to get it ready to be my daily driver because I'm in a Cadillac right now. And it's not the blue rose. So you see what happened to blue rose plus the interior is blue. But there's a tan cat light behind me. So yeah, if you guys are on my Instagram page, you already know. You're already in the loop. Uh, if you're not, you can go check out the Instagram page, the Cadillac Dance Show. I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, you can backtrack and you can already see what I got. But I got another Cadillac. Woo! Yeah, this one's really sweet. Um, I'm gonna do another video or I'm gonna do a video on it because I haven't done one yet 
but uh, I'm gonna do a video on it here shortly. I was wanting to get a little bit of minor body damage done and polish it, but some things have taken priorities over that, so I haven't quite got to do that. And like I said, I need to get back on the Cadillac because October is coming very quickly, very quickly, faster than I want it to. And I thought I had a big, big problem with the Fleetwood. So when I pulled it out of the shop, I noticed it before I put it in the shop, but I didn't notice it so bad when I brought it out and I actually washed it. And I thought it was in some severe damage. So I was kind of worried about it. I was kind of putting it off. It, it kind of got to a point where I was mad and I didn't want to mess with it anymore. Even though I just did all that work to it. Hence, you know, why I thought it was that bad. But uh, I'll leave that for another video too. Because uh, I don't think it's going to be as bad as what I thought it would be. But you'll have to wait and figure that out. Uh, other than that, hope you liked the video. Hit the like button, share it, subscribe, comment. Uh, you guys have all been commenting. That's pretty cool. I like interacting with everybody. If you have any questions, let me know. I did get a new camera. Yeah, because I lost so much footage on all the other videos. Got a new, well, new phone, I guess you'd say. It's got a lot more storage in it, so I shouldn't be having the problem with losing footage. And hopefully the picture quality is better. I don't know. You, know. you can tell me if it's a difference, if you notice a difference or not. Uh, it's a little bit better phone. It ain't no iPhone 11 or nothing like that, but it's a decent phone, I think. But other than that, I think I'm going to leave it here. Uh, it's hot outside. That's why I'm in the car. I got the AC on. So other than that, until the next video, uh, keep on hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing, like I said. Appreciate it. See ya. What's the problem? <laughs>